On this episode of Nature in Your Face, we travel to a place known as Snake Road, located at the southern tip of Illinois. We will be searching for several species of venomous snakes, including the copperhead and timber rattlesnake. As we take you on a two and a half mile trek down one of the most amazing and unique stretches of road anywhere in the world. This iconic road is home to a variety of rare birds, reptiles, and amphibians. So strap on your boots, because we're about to walk down Snake Road. Nature in your face! Snake Road is situated along the La Rue Pine Hills, which is a protected area within the Shawnee National Forest in southern Illinois. A massive wall of limestone bluffs stretching five miles and standing several hundred feet tall flank the eastern side of the road, and flatland swamp is to the west. When the famous explorers Lewis and Clark first encountered the bluffs during their travels, they were so impressed and inspired them to mention them in their journals. These bluffs were formed long ago and began to take shape under the sea. Over time, the water began to recede and the awesome rock formations within the bluffs were carved out from the relentless forces of wind and water erosion. The swampland on the opposite side of the road was formed when the Big Muddy River became channelized between levees as it flowed into the Mississippi River. This perfect storm of geological events created what is now the ideal habitat for all sorts of plant and animal species that inhabit the area. Each year in the spring and fall, the road is temporarily closed to motor vehicles to allow the dozens of species of reptiles and amphibians to safely cross the road to the feeding grounds and back to their hibernacula. Well, here it is, the famous Snake Road, probably not what you pictured, all it is it's a 2.5 mile gravel and dirt road. You got bluffs on one side, you got forest and swamp on the other. This is basically Snake Road. What do you think, Jeremy? Yeah, that's right. I think a lot of people let the name Snake Road intimidate them. Obviously, it's not a road that's completely covered with snakes. You can find snakes. It's one of the easiest animals to find. But I mean, there's birds, flowers. Just if you're a nature lover, you need to be out here. It's just not about snakes. You don't even have to like reptiles to come check this place out. It's amazing. For sure. It's also really good exercise. <laughs> After hiking only a few hundred yards up the road, it would already begin to live up to its name. Whoa. Awesome. Hey guys, this is <laughs> one of the three species of venomous snakes found on Snake Road. Most common one, the cottonmouth. That's right. I mean, when you come to Snake Road and you don't see a cottonmouth, you should leave crying because this is the easiest yeah. snake to find. <laughs> now, we're not gonna keep the snake here. It stopped for us, it's gaping. It wants to cruise and just get away. And that's what they do. They don't chase people. They just cross this road yep. and go back to the water. He's well aware of our presence. The reason we're not stopping him is completely illegal to touch anything on Snake Nobody Road. Did. It's a look but not touch road. So don't make that mistake, you'll get in big trouble. That's right, don't bring a hook out here. Play with the snakes, naughty naughty. The cottonmouth is by far the most frequently encountered reptile on Snake Road. During the height of the spring migration, it is not unusual to see dozens of them in a single day on and along the road. The name cottonmouth refers to the contrasting white lining inside the mouth, which serves as a warning to any potential threat that this snake is venomous and should be left alone. These snakes are highly aquatic and are often seen swimming with their heads elevated above the water, which is not surprising considering they prey heavily upon fish and amphibians as well as birds, mammals, and other snakes. Its scientific name, Pisivorus, literally means fish eater. The surrounding forest and swampland is the lifeblood of Snake Road, providing water, food, and shelter for the thousands of plant and animal species that inhabit the area. Natural spring water can be seen bubbling up from the ground, pumping a continuous flow of cool water into the swamp. Several creeks and small streams also feed the swamp from the forested areas along the bluffs.
25 different species of snakes are known to cross Snake Road. More than 85% of them are non-venomous and harmless to people, including this beautiful common king snake we found crossing the road in broad daylight. Its scientific name, Lampropeltis, means shiny shield, which is evident when looking at the smooth and glossy scales covering the snake's body. It is secretive and not often encountered, but sometimes it's just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. This was only the second time we've ever found one on Snake Road. This slow-moving and powerful constrictor is immune to snake venom and regularly preys on cotton mouths and copperheads, which is why it is truly the king of snakes. Forget about Snake Road, they need to call this place Turtle, Frog, Salamander, Snake, <laughs> Lizard Road because you can find pretty much all of this stuff on the road. I just came across an eastern box turtle. Now it's a male, it's got the concave shell, it has the red eyes. Females would have more of a flat shell and they would have brown eyes. Eastern box turtles love water and are usually encountered during or after heavy rains where they will emerge from their burrows to feed on mushrooms, earthworms, and wild berries. These slow moving and attractive reptiles are occasionally seen on Snake Road, but you're far more likely to see one crossing some of the busier roads in the surrounding area. We also found this three-toed box turtle off trail in heavy forest not far from Snake Road. Only a few specimens have ever been found in western Illinois, and it is believed that they may have made their way across the Mississippi River from their native habitat in adjacent Missouri as a result of flooding. It is also possible that they may have escaped or have been released into the area. All right, so we are hiking up to a den that we know of. We're looking for some timber rattlesnakes right now, the jewel of Snake Road. And on our way, we've encountered two little babies. What do we got here, Jeremy? Yes, we have a juvenile cotton mouth. You check out the pattern on this. The colors of the babies are much lighter than the adults we've seen. The adults are going to get a lot darker as they grow. The coolest part here is this little yellow tail. Like it's called a, yeah, it's a caudal lure. So they would use that just like if you were fishing to trick something to come in, a fish to come get it, except for this one, they want to wiggle that. A lizard will come down, potentially small bird, thinking it's an insect. As soon as they move in, bam, they get the fangs of the little tiny cotton mouth. And they'd still have potent venom. So we're not going to be messing around with the babies. You can see that he's checking us out with his tongue right there. Mm -hmm. Look at looks that like, camouflage. Looks like a little French fry from Happy Meal. I mean, look at these leaves <laughs> blending in on that thing. Beautiful. Just disappears. As he comes towards me, but it's all right. Not gonna hurt me with these big bad boots on. Good find, guys. Good find. All right, so this is the perfect example of a snake den. Inside here is where the snakes would go down into the hibernaculum, well away from the winter frost. But it's really cool in here and open. Nice place to hang out during the winter. The possibility of finding a large timber rattlesnake is often the main reason one will make the trip down to Snake Road. We have met people from all over the US and even the world hiking the road hoping to photograph this awesome snake. Even during the height of the migration period, it is only rarely seen on Snake Road and to maximize our chances of locating one, we had to think like a snake. That meant traveling through thick forest up towards the same dens the snakes were headed back to where they would overwinter until next spring. After methodically searching in and around each rock for several hours, we eventually hit the jackpot and located several timber rattlesnakes. The first rattlesnake we found was wedged in a rock crevice, seeking shelter in its den. We decided to return the next day knowing that the snake would likely take advantage of the morning sun and move out from the den to bask. Sure enough, we spotted the snake, all five feet of it, sitting quietly and hoping not to be noticed. Over the years we found many timber rattlesnakes. Their color and pattern varies greatly, 
this one being light in color with a prominent rust colored stripe on the back and bright yellow markings on the side of the head. It only began to rattle as we moved closer. Timber rattlesnakes are reluctant to strike and only do so as a last line of defense. Despite its surprisingly mild disposition, this is undoubtedly one of North America's most deadly serpents. The venom yield is high and copious amounts of deadly toxins are delivered through fangs that can be more than an inch in length. Venom toxicity varies depending upon geographic location. Snakes possessing largely neurotoxic venom are found in parts of the southern range and hemotoxic venom is more consistent in snakes to the north. It's not surprising that Ben Franklin viewed the timber rattlesnake as a symbol of America, saying her eye excelled in brightness, esteemed an emblem of vigilance. She never begins an attack, nor, when once engaged, ever surrenders. She is an emblem of true courage. Man, I feel like we should be back at the road already. This was your idea. What's that smell? I knew I should have gone first. Hey, I think I feel a salamander. Not a salamander. Dude. I told you we should have gone left. It wasn't my fault. <sighs> Get back in there. That's why I navigate. Once we were back on the road, we were finding snakes everywhere. Rough green snakes could be found on the ground as well as in the trees. These snakes have amazing camouflage, perfectly resembling the vines growing on the branches. Several species of water snakes can be found on the road, including this plain belly, heading to the swamp in search of its favorite prey, fish and amphibians. One of the smallest and easiest snakes to identify on the road is the ringneck snake. They are rear fanged and possess a mild venom that is used to subdue their prey. Growing to lengths of nearly six feet, the rat snake is one of the most impressive and common snakes you'll see on the road. If there was a beauty pageant for snakes, the red milk snake would win hands down. This subspecies of the eastern milk snake is brighter in color with reduced lateral blotches. All right, I wanna show you one of the most perfect examples of camouflage in nature. Don't ask me how I saw this thing, but sitting right here to my left, is a venomous copperhead. And I'll tell you what, there's a reason he's not moving. He's very confident that I haven't seen him. And that's because this snake is well aware that he's perfectly blending in amongst these leaves, which are the same color as that body. I'm gonna kind of point out his head, just so the viewers can kind of see him. He's sitting motionless. He's not interested in harming me. A couple reasons why he wants to be camouflaged. Hide from predators, hide from prey. What an awesome find. The flathead snake is among the most difficult snakes to find at Snake Road. They are listed as threatened in Illinois and spend the majority of their time underground. We were beyond excited to have found two in one day. Garter snakes are a common sight on the road. This beautiful garter snake was an unusual golden color and we also found one with red markings along the body. The closely related ribbon snake, which is often confused with the garter snake, is thinner and has a pair of spots on the top of the head. We also found several other species of fossorial snakes, meaning they spend most of their lives underground, like this really colorful worm snake and this not so colorful, but every bit as cool, smooth earth snake. The black racer is well known for its speed and getting a photo of one sitting still can be a challenge. The Mississippi green water snake has a head that resembles a young anaconda and is another species of snake that is not encountered on the road often. The strikingly beautiful mud snake preys on sirens and other amphibians, so look for this snake in the swampy areas on the road. As day turns to night, an entirely different group of animals become active, particularly after a rain. This is when the amphibians begin to rule Snake Road. 
Flooding between the swamp and the bluffs allows fish, tadpoles, and other aquatic animals to cross over from one side to the other. It was at this time that we would find one of Snake Road's most secretive amphibians, the Lesser Siren. This slimy, eel-like salamander spends the day underwater buried in the mud or in thick vegetation, emerging only at night to feed. They lack rear limbs and take in oxygen with their large feathery gills. Their tail is flattened and serves as a paddle, allowing the salamander to move quickly through the water to escape predators and to catch prey. After a light rain, we spotted a large frog and to our disbelief, it was the elusive crayfish frog. Because they spend most of the year deep underground in crayfish burrows, we never expected to see one which made it all the more exciting. Chances are, this would likely be the first and last we would have the opportunity to film one. Another burrowing species, the eastern spadefoot toad, is typically only observed for a few short weeks during the mating season when it gathers in large numbers in pools of water suitable for breeding. They have large eyes and an hourglass shape on the back, making them easy to identify. There are three species of tree frogs found at Snake Road, each having a distinct call. The gray tree frog emits a high-pitched trill that is completely different when compared to the nearly identical looking bird voice tree frog, which as its name indicates, sounds more like a bird than a frog. The green tree frog call starts out soft, but builds up to a loud honking noise. Aside from their distinct calls, another way to tell the difference between the gray tree frog and the bird voice tree frog is by the color on the back of the inner thighs. The bird voice tree frog has green coloration, whereas the gray tree frog has orange. There are no shortage of salamanders at Snake Road, like this marbled salamander and slimy salamander. They're usually found under logs, flat stones, or leaf litter in the forested areas close to the bluffs. Other species can be found clinging to the sides of the bluffs or in the grottoes, like the longtail, cave, and zigzag salamanders. We found this large common snapping turtle at the end of the road, and as we watched it quietly slip under the water, it was a perfect finish to a long night of hiking. Unfortunately, our epic journey has come to an end, and as we head out, we can't help but feel grateful to Scott Ballard and others from the Illinois DNR for closing the road each year, helping to protect and preserve the many species of wildlife that inhabit the area. Hey everyone, hope you guys enjoyed this snake road adventure as much as we did. This is definitely one of our favorite places to visit. For sure. Now there's only three things left to do. Number one, hit that like button if you enjoyed this and hit it hard. Number two, I want you guys to subscribe to the channel. I'm not sure why you haven't done this yet. You need to get on it. Number three, pack your bags. Road trip, get here, get to Snake Road. It's an amazing place. You don't want to miss out on it. And listen, bring the family, because it's not just Snake Road. There's a lot of things to do around here. You've got the Garden of the Gods, the Oakwood Bottoms, the Little Grand Canyon. And also, make sure you hit that notification bell to get some more nature in your face. Now there's a ton of cracks and crevices in these bluffs, so you have to really, really look in every one of these to make sure that you're not going to pass a possible snake in one of these dens. Hey Dave!